Hyper-V virtual machines can be installed to a GeoCluster replicated disk, which I've already covered in a previous video. On the screen, I have Failover Cluster Manager, and you can see I have a virtual machine that is running, um, and that is installed to a GeoCluster replicated disk, which is actually the F drive on two separate Hyper-V nodes that each have their own storage. There is no shared storage when we're using a GeoCluster. This does of course mean that we can create a very low cost, highly available Hyper-V GeoCluster. I'm just opening up the disks, the F drive on the two nodes in the cluster. We can see the folder what that contains the virtual machine and all the configuration settings and snapshots for the virtual machine. Now if I go to my active node and create a new file on the GeoCluster replicated disk. You can see I can easily create a new file and it's almost immediately replicated to the passive node in the cluster. Now if I attempt the same um, process on the passive node, you can see I'm denied. I, I have no access to write to that disk. If I delete the file from the active node, it will again be deleted from the passive node in the cluster. I can browse the folder that contains my virtual machine. I can see I've just got a single VHD file for this virtual machine, some configuration files, etc. And that is uh, obviously duplicated on the passive node in the cluster. What I'm going to do is actually open up the uh, Hyper-V console for this virtual machine. And I'm going to create a snapshot. And we'll see the snapshot folder gets created, the snapshot gets created, and it will appear on both the active node and the passive node. In fact, you can actually see it's appeared in the background already. So I'll give the snapshot a name, and then we'll just have a quick look. You can see I've got a snapshot folder on the active node in the cluster, and also on the passive node in the cluster. What I'm gonna demonstrate now is a live migration of the Hyper-V virtual machine between two nodes in the cluster. So the two nodes in the cluster are separated by a network link, which is I think about 10 megabits. And we are going to do a failover between the two nodes in the cluster. First of all, I'm pinging. I've set up a continuous ping inside the virtual machine. It's simply pinging its default gateway. Now on my, uh, management machine, I'm just going to set up a continuous ping to ping the clustered virtual machine. And we'll see how long the virtual machine is unavailable for during the live migration. So using failover cluster manager, and I'm just simply going to select my virtual machine and say live migration to another node in the cluster, which is node number two. Now we'll see the mi live migration begins uh, as memory is transferred between the, the two nodes and the server is up and running, it's responding to ping, users are still accessing and working on the live server. Now this is in real time, um, so we can see we have been disconnected from our existing connection to the uh, original Hyper-V host but immediately we can reconnect and we can see the virtual machine itself has not skipped a beat. It does not think it's it's been down at all. My management workstation did detect this a small timeout and we've got a, a couple of missed ping responses. What's happening now is double take. The GeoCluster replicated disk is now re-mirroring back to the original disk. So the active and passive roles have swapped around and we're just doing a block checksum re-mirror to verify consistency of the data. We need to wait for that mirror to complete before we could fail over again. So live migration is nice, but what about if we actually had a, a server failure with an unplanned uh, failure of one of the hosts in the cluster? Now I've devised a small test here. I have a, a, a batch file that I'm looping around that is basically doing a net time command to a text file every few seconds. It's basically just continuously looping. So I, I get a, an updated time in my text file about every three or four seconds. So this is um, in real time. I'm going to just uh, display the clock, the Windows clock, and we can see the second hand uh, slowly counting up. What I'm going to do to simulate a failure is stop the 
cluster service on the active node in the cluster. This will cause a cluster failure and the Hyper-V virtual machine will be restarted on the, the target node. So as soon as it hits 12, I'm going to stop the service. Okay, there it's gone. We can actually see straight away the uh, virtual machine is is greyed out and it is now restarting on the active node in the cluster. I'm going to uh, speed up the video now because we've all seen Windows Boot before. We still have the text file and the, thing, the key thing is to look at the time in the text file to see what time is, is written in that text file which gives an indication of how much data loss there may have been in the, uh, in the real life failover. Remember the text file was being updated every three to four, five seconds. It was a continuous loop. So we'll get a good indication of how much data loss we may have encountered during a cluster failure. All I need to do is open up Windows Explorer, find the file that was uh, being updated and see what time it says. Okay, we can see the time in the text file is 9.11 and 54 seconds. It's 9.15 now. Um, obviously Windows took a little while to boot up, but the point being the cluster was destroyed at 9.12 exactly. So we've got six seconds there. We've got the looping file. Basically it's showing that uh, the double take real time replication engine is not losing us any significant amount of data. The last thing we need to do obviously is re-enable the cluster and as soon as the mirror has uh, completed we can fail over again. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au